300 BC. This is the end of the Neolithic time in Japan, also known as the Jimon period. During this time, as you would expect, there wasn't a lot going on. Pretty much everyone were hunter-gatherers scavenging for food and ways to simply survive. The diet consisted of a variety of seafood, as well as nuts and plants like bamboo shoots. The main technical advancement was pottery, with these cool patterns. But their purpose wasn't merely aesthetic. These containers were basically perfect vessels for making and preserving all types of yummy fish. They would boil and roast the seafood they caught, as well as ferment it for preservation reasons. Right after these guys, we have the Yayoi period. This is where rice gets introduced from China and Korea, which is obviously the most significant event in all of Japanese history. Japanese summers were and still are very humid and rainy, which was advantageous for the rice. There were also a lot more calories in it, making a lot more Japanese bellies full. It's actually insane because these tiny pebble-looking grains established roles in the agricultural hierarchy. It was also used in some religious ceremonies, but that's not too important for this video. This kind of rice renaissance period ended around 250 AD or the 3rd century, and following it we have the Kofun period. At this point, rice is a classic, it's a staple. Everyone knows it, everyone loves it, that's confirmed. One thing that's a bit different though, is that because Buddhism is just starting to happen, some people don't really want to consume animal products, leading to an increase in the consumption of vegetables like soybeans, aka edamame, and leafy greens. Around the mid-6th century though, this period ends and we go into the Nara period. This is around the time when Buddhism has just peaked, making a lot of people become vegan and reject their carnivorous desires. As for beverages, green tea starts becoming a thing too, and sake is widely consumed. We also see sweets emerge in Japan thanks to Chinese influence. Manju aka steamed dough and senbei aka rice crackers were delicious sweets originating around this time that are still enjoyed to this day. People also recognize that there were regional ingredients that were just better in some areas. And as a result, you would see ingredients from various different places all incorporated into one dish. Another few hundred years passes and we enter the 8th century, labeled the Heian period. This is where stuff gets kinda interesting. Well, for me at least. Anyways, we got miso, we got soy sauce, we got tofu, and we have grilling. These are the modern staples of Japanese cooking. The rich people ate deer because they were very extra for no reason, but the normal citizen liked himself some grilled fish with simmered vegetables. The Heian period is also the time when people wanted to make their food look good, so presentation was actually important. Matcha also gets introduced, in addition to an early version of the well-known Japanese tea ceremony. Moving on, we have the Kamakura and the Muromachi periods. Once again, thanks to China, we now have bread and some other sweet stuff. We also have a soup made from mashed soybeans that the samurais apparently had a blast with. Now we're gonna do a massive time skip of 500 years, where we arrive at the Edo period. Japan is basically blowing up with everything at this point the economy, art, social order, and there's a huge and thriving culture. Around this time, soba noodles are introduced, which if you don't know, are basically just noodles that are made from buckwheat. We finally get sushi close to what we know it as today, which is just rice with vinegar and raw fish on top. We also get tempura, which if you don't know, fun fact, is actually by way of Portugal. It's not originally a Japanese dish. We also see street food absolutely popping off, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty safe to say that this is the most influential period of time on modern Japan. Japan gets a new update and we see katsu, curry rice, and rice omelets. The only three dishes that your average anime fan knows. At this point, Japanese food is already established and all that happens now is slight changes over 200 more years to reach what we have today. Like and subscribe. See ya.